Hi, I'm Ernie Conover. I think buying a used lathe represents a very good value. Mini lathes and midi lathes tend to bring anywhere from 50% to two-thirds of their original cost. This represents a great value and they're fairly easy to move. It's something uh, two people can do on an afternoon in most cases. The real sweet spot, however, in buying a used lathe is a full-size lathe. We're talking an industrial lathe here that has a spindle size of inch and an eighth at least, but I would say inch and a quarter to inch and a half. These are lathes that will do heavy faceplate work and come back smiling. Avoid older full-size lathes that only have a one-inch spindle on them. There's a fair number around and they're not really up to heavy faceplate work. In 2015, I bought this full-size one-way 2436 from a friend who was moving into an assisted living situation and was selling his entire shop. He called me to ask who would be interested in this lathe and I said, me. I asked him uh, what the price would be and he said, well, uh, how about $3,500? And I said, that seems kind of cheap because I knew it would sell for maybe $7,500 to $8,000 for this machine at that time. And he says, no, that's a fair price and that's what I wanted for it. Now it was built uh, in 1998 and so it would be a 22 year old machine today and there was no spring checking at that time. At 850 pounds, uh, he had gotten about four people to help him get it into the basement when it arrived. And his caveat was that I had to get it back up out of his basement without harming his house. You had to go up a set of basement steps that were a bit rickety. I had to nail a couple four befores under them to make sure that they were strong enough. And then they came onto a landing and you had to turn right out of a door there. You couldn't go straight out. And then it had to come back this way down a long hallway and out his front door. The hallway was covered with marble tiles that were 36 inches square with little brass strips running between them. So you couldn't drop pieces of iron on them without cracking them. And that was his concern and justified one. Since the machine weighs 850 pounds, I knew it wasn't coming out of the basement in one piece. And in fact, that's a good solution to moving any machine. Anything you can detach or lighten it up a bit is worth doing. I moved in with a set of 3 8 and a set of half inch sockets and two sets of combination wrenches and just tore this thing into separate pieces. Tailstock, Banjos, all of that came off pretty easily. Moved this little extension bed, which wasn't a big deal. And you simply unscrewed these cap screws with a big Allen wrench. And the, this piece came off. It's a bit heavy, but I was able to move that out to the truck easily. Same with that tailstock. I then could go in through this door down here and remove the motor in its mount that took quite a bit of weight off. And the headstock was pretty easy. I, since the belt was now loose, I could just undo these cap screws and I could just lift this and get it out to my truck without too much problem. I had earlier on disconnected all the power cables from the controller box, which is right down here. That left me with the two legs, the controller box, and the barrel of the lathe, the bed itself, sitting on the, sitting on the floor. And I hooked a chain hoist to this end of the bed and connected the chain hoist to a ceiling rafter in the basement. 
and simply pull this upright. Now it weighs 325 pounds, but I'm only lifting one end of it. I'm really tipping it. So I probably could have done that just by brute force, but I used a chain hoist, it was safer and easier. I now had it standing on this end of the barrel. I unbolted these two legs, which again, I could carry all of that out to the car, just up the stairs and out. I then drove to a rental center and rented a stair climbing lift truck, a, a dolly, if you will. I rented one that's made by Electro Truck, and it is like an aluminum ladder that the two halves move back and forth on a lead screw. And I simply backed up to the stairs with this once I'd strapped it to the dolly. You bring the uh, back half of the ladder up to the second step and then the first step and you just keep walking it with a lead screw and a set of buttons you control with your right hand right up the stairs turned went through the door down the hall swung it around 180 degrees and walked it down three big stone steps out to my truck I had stationed there a about two foot square box that I had made at the shop ahead of time. I lifted with the dolly up onto that, the rear part of the ladder, and then brought it up onto the box, and then I went up onto the tailgate of the truck and put it in the truck. Drove to my shop, reversed all of this, got it all in the shop, drove back to the rental center. I had three hours for 75 bucks to rent this thing and returned it within three hours. I slept very well that night because it was sort of a tense mentally process that I went through, but I did it completely alone. I didn't have any help whatsoever. With one helper, it would have been a piece of cake. Another good way to move machinery in general, lathes or otherwise, is call around and find a, a towing service for cars that has a tilt bed truck. Especially if the lathe is in a garage or a first floor shop where there's a driveway right up to it, you can back one of these up. You can put some dollies under the uh, lathe or a set of jacks, which I'll show you how that works in a second move it right over to the tilt bed. They just winch it right up into the tilt bed, strap it down, drive it to your shop, and reverse the process. That's how I got this big felder saw right here into my shop when I moved from my old shop to my new shop. I also had to move this at that time for the second time. And I got a friend of mine who's an excavator and lives right down the street and he drove over with a skid stair with rubber tires on it drove right into the old shop and we put the bucket under here with some cribbing under it uh, to keep from hurting the one way and we just drove it to 650 feet over to this shop and he put it right down where i wanted it a sort of equal way to do it uh, again for machinery in general if you have a tractor with a front end loader you'd be surprised uh, you have to check what the rating for the front end loader is uh, capacity that is but you can often put a couple of straps on a machine like this hook it to the front end loader bucket and simply lift it up and drive away another great way to move machinery in general and lathes in particular, I move these Powermatics around all the time because sometimes I bolt both of them together and I can turn 11 foot 6 inches between centers for big spindle jobs. But I can just bring these just a little bit off the floor like that and I can now move that machine pretty easily with two floor jacks. So it's a matter of thinking it through, never lifting anything. You don't ever brute lift it. You slide it. You put it on dollies. You use jacks, ropes, levers. You have to think like Archimedes. But uh, it's 
fairly easy to move machinery, but you have to think it through and do it safely. Steel toe shoes aren't a bad idea to wear when you're moving machinery. Uh, I also find leather gloves to, uh, just to protect your hands a little bit are a good idea. I hope some of these thoughts I've gained through experience will help you to move your dream lathe to your shop. Once you get it there, set it up and enjoy it. This is Ernie Conover saying thanks for visiting.